Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright at Air, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I've grouped a couple of patents together in this compilation video, and that's for the reason because they both suffer from a condition called tympanosclerosis, and more specifically, moringosclerosis. And I'll explain what moringosclerosis is and how it um, kind of somewhat differs to the normal term given uh, of tympanosclerosis. Now, um, I'm not going to give it away straight away, but I want you guys to look carefully at the wax itself. And um, I will disclose what I'm making reference to a bit later, but see if you can identify something within the wax itself. And I'll, I'll, I will come back to that before the end of this particular patient's procedure. Now, I've just instilled some olive oil medical grade um, spray to help bind this wax together. The patient did use a bit of hydrogen peroxide drops and it's just made the wax almost like a swamp condition, um, a swamp consistency. Therefore, the olive oil helps to bind it together. And I'm just slowly working it away around the edge. I want to just separate it from around the edge. Um, and it's just blocked the tube there. So I think I've put some more olive oil spray in. I'm just going to suction some of the excess oil out. So um, the term tympanosclerosis is given to uh, when the eardrum and sometimes the middle ear structure, so the ossicles, the three bones, or even the mastoid um, region, um, has uh, has become calcified. So you get calcification, which is a buildup of calcium salts. And if that normally presents itself on the eardrum as chalky um, white patches. Um, but you can then get some um, tympanosclerotic plaques, which can then affect the, the movement of the ossicles, the bones, it can stiffen them. So if these calcium uh, deposits, uh, the calcification is exclusively on the eardrum only, we call that moringolosclerosis. But if it also then extends... Um, into plaques and it affects, um, it's it's connected to the ossicles, so the hammer, anvil and stirrup, which I talked about in yesterday's video, or sometimes um, even the mastoid region itself. Um, we call that intratympanic tympanosclerosis, and that can generally cause a hearing loss, whereas moringosclerosis, if it's just exclusively on the eardrum, it, it doesn't always. And you can see here, this patient's got... Um, moringosclerosis both anteriorly, so to the front part of the eardrum at three o'clock and also um, posteriorly at, at nine o'clock. And um, there's different causes for um, moringosclerosis or tympanosclerosis. It could be long-term chronic middle ear infection, so glue ear. Um, patients with arteriosclerosis, so when you get a buildup of um, fatty acids, cholesterol, plaques in your arteries, which then restrict the blood flow. And there's a link there. Um, sometimes you can get one of these um, patches, and it's more, it's more on the anterior superior quadrant. So what I mean by that, in the case of the right ear, we're probably looking at one or two o'clock, but the white patch is behind the eardrum, and it looks like tympanosclerosis, but it's not, but it's it, it's instead um, congenital cleshiotoma, which a cleshiotoma is a, is a very uh, dangerous condition to have, and I have talked about a, a cleshiotoma um, several times. It's a congenital middle ear um, cholesterol but you, you can normally tell that the, the white patch is behind the eardrum where in the case of moringosclerosis it's normally formed in the middle layer the, where the fibrous connected tissue layer is so it's the eardrum is three layers thick you've got the um, epithelial layer the epidermis skin which is the outermost layer then you've got the innermost which is the mucosal layer of skin and in the middle you've got this fibrous uh, layer with some connected tissue and the calcification normally occurs there now um the other reason um, why sometimes people develop um, uh, moringosclerosis or tympanosclerosis is when they have grommets or T-tubes or ventilation tubes, I believe they're called in the States, fitted to equalise, to help equalise the middle ear pressure and allow fluid to drain out of the middle ear, which um, shouldn't really be there. Now, um, patient one, you may have noticed, it, it would appear that they had some fungal spores yeah, within the wax. I don't know if you guys noticed that, so... Hopefully you did. And this is patient two. So the patient two, the wax came up relatively easily, but there, you can also you can even see it here. The endoscope's not even in there, but you can see they've got some posterior um, moringosclerosis there. And when we show it back to patients, they they often are worried 
if it affects the hearing. And as I said, but it's if it's exclusively on the eardrum, typically no. But if it can, of course, for example, you can see it's close to the hammer bone there, um, the, the posterior patch. So that if, it, if, it, if the plaques then impact on the bone itself, yes, possibly it can cause a hearing loss. But in the mainstay, it doesn't. So, so it's quite, it's more extensive in this patient than patient one. That's the left and this is the right. Ear. So here it's more in the anterior inferior quadrant. So in the case of the right ear, we're talking about um, the southeast region. You can see there's, there's two little patches there. So well, I hope you enjoy the explanation. So guys, uh, this is a, a message that I got today. It's from a former employee of a high street hearing chain and they advised that their secretary was asked to um, go on an earwax removal training course and good on the secretary. She refused and she explained to the, her bosses that she's there as a, not as a clinician, but as um, to, to work as an administrator within the company and, um, so I've got some um, not confirmed news, but uh, nonetheless, some positive news, I believe. Uh, I will disclose that tomorrow. But thank you for all your efforts. I do think it's it's paid um, it's 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 made it's paid dividends and um, we've got the change and desired outcome that I was hoping for. So I must really thank you guys for all your support and efforts. It means a tremendous amount to me. But I will talk about it a bit more um, later tomorrow. Well, take care, guys. Speak, um, keep well and speak soon. Bye.